Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm sharing 10 new farmhouse style DIYs that are super easy and all of them are affordable. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Now let's get right into today's projects. For the first DIY today, I'm going to be using four of these 4x6 canvases from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be removing all of the canvases from their frames. To do that, I'm using my utility knife and I'm running the knife along the outside edges of my frame and I'm doing that on the outside of where the staples are. Once I have it cut, I'm then just removing the canvas and then any of the canvas that is still underneath the staples, I'm just ripping that right off of the back side of the frame. Now that I have all of my canvas removed, I'm painting all four of my wood frames with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I only had to do one coat of paint for all of the frames and I did make sure to paint the inside of the frames as well because you will be able to see them. Once the plaster color was all dry, I then used my Folk Art chalk paint in the color Castle on a Dollar Tree stencil brush and I very lightly painted this color over top of the frames to give them a farmhouse a rustic look. And again, I just continued that same step for all four frames. Now it's time to attach all of my frames. To do this, I am using hot glue. I placed hot glue on one side of one of my frames to attach it to another one of the frames to make one section and then I did the same thing for the bottom two frames. I just hot glued them together on the sides to make a second section and then I hot glued the two sections together to make one piece. For this project I thought it would be really cute to add some chicken wire to the backs of my frame. So here I'm taking this chicken wire that I picked up from Joanne Fabrics a really long time ago. I'm not sure if they still sell it but I am just cutting it down to size to go on the back of my frame and I use just some cutters that I have from Dollar Tree to do that. And then I'm taking the strip of chicken wire that I just cut and I'm stretching it out a little bit so that it will fit a little bit better on the back of my frame. And then I'm using my staple gun to staple it along the back of the frame. I did those same steps for the remaining three frames. I thought by working in sections with the chicken wire, it was just a little bit easier to work with. If you can't find the roll of wire at Joanne Fabrics like this one, I do know that hardware stores like Lowe's and Home Depot do sell it. Once I had all of my wire attached, I'm then adding this windmill that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I did get it after Christmas time. It was on clearance and I'm just cutting off the hanger that came on the ornament and then to attach it to the center of my frame, I'm using hot glue around the inside circle and just pressing that down in the center of the frames. And this is the framed windmill piece all finished. I think it turned out super cute and it was really affordable to create. If you wanted to, you could put a hanger on the back of it and hang it on the wall or just set it on a table like I did here. Now moving into DIY number two. For this project, I'm using one of these unfinished mini wooden candlesticks. This piece did come from Hobby Lobby and it came in a pack of, I believe, four of them. I'm starting by painting this piece with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and I did only do one coat of paint on this. For this project, I'm also using this mini galvanized watering can. I did just recently pick it up at Hobby Lobby and it was on clearance for 74 cents. It had a stem on the bottom of it that I just wiggled a little bit to pop that off. Once that was off, I then used hot glue on the top of my candlestick and then attached it right in the center of the bottom of my watering can. I then added some Spanish moss from Dollar Tree inside of the watering can and I'm also using some of these mini succulents from Michaels and I'm using three of them for this project. I put hot glue on the bottom of each succulent and then placed it inside of the Spanish moss. Once I had all of the succulents inside of the can, I ended up adding some more Spanish moss around all of the succulents. And to do that, again, I just used hot glue on the Spanish moss and then stuck that around each succulent. 
For the last step in this project, I did end up adding a little bit of distressing to the bottom of the candlestick, and I used the Folk Art Chalk Paint in the color Castle to do that. This is my pedestal watering can planner all finished. I think this piece turned out so cute and I really haven't seen anything else like this out in stores. And it is the perfect spring and summer decor piece for any tiered tray. Today is a 10 on Tuesday and I'm partnering up with my good friend Heidi Sambel from Heidi Sambel DIY. I'm sure all of you have heard of her. She has an amazing DIY channel as well as I believe three or four other channels as well. If you guys enjoy watching my channel, then I know that you'll love hers. She creates so many high-end decor pieces and she's just so creative and truly inspiring. Once you're done watching my video, you can head on over to her channel and her video. She's also creating 10 DIYs today, and I'll have her channel and video linked down in my description box. Now for DIY number three. For this one, I'm using this rolling pin hanger that I picked up from Dollar General. It's really cute on its own, but I wanted to make it go a little bit better with my decor. So I'm first starting by cutting off the jute hanger that was on this piece. I am not gonna be using it as a hanger. And then I painted the front of the rolling pin with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I did have to do three coats of this paint to get all of the words and that design covered up. And I left the handles of the rolling pin that stained color. Then I'm taking this black and white buffalo check ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm tying it around the left handle of my rolling pin and I'm creating a really simple bow and then I'm cutting the tail ends of that ribbon on an angle. For this project, I'm also using this unfinished blessed word and this came in a pack of unfinished wood words and I picked them up from Hobby Lobby. I'm painting mine with the rich black colored paint from Folk Art and I just did one quick coat. And then placing some hot glue on the back side of my word and then I'm putting that right in the center of my rolling pin. Next I'm using some hot glue to attach four of these towering game blocks from Dollar Tree. I want my sign to stand up so this is just creating a stand to go on the back of my sign. Once I have all four of them glued together, I'm then placing some hot glue on the back of those blocks and then attaching them to the back of my rolling pin to create my stand. And this is my rolling pin sign all finished. It was really cute before I transformed it, but now it goes perfect with the home decor that I currently have in my kitchen. And now for DIY number four. For this project, I'm using a 24 by five and a half inch piece of wood. This piece of wood I'd already painted black for a project and then I ended up not doing that project. So here I'm just repainting it with my castle colored chalk paint from Folk Art and I only did a one quick coat of this paint. Once this paint was all dry, I then took my Waverly paint in the color plaster and I very lightly dry brushed this color over top of the castle color for a distressed look. Then I'm using three of these wall pocket hangers. These are from Dollar Tree and I'm using three of these words, plant, grow, bloom, that I made on my Cricut machine. But if you don't have a Cricut, you can always use a Dollar Tree's letter stickers to create the words. Now I'm transferring all three of my plant grow bloom words onto my planners. If you don't have the vinyl or a Cricut machine to be able to cut your words out, you can always use the stickers from Dollar Tree. Those are always another great option. Next, I'm placing my planners on my piece of wood and just spacing them out exactly where I want them to be before I start attaching them. To attach them, I am using hot glue. I'm just picking them up, placing the hot glue on the back of them, and then pressing them back onto the wood. They do have a hole if you wanted to use like a nail or a screw, but I just used hot glue. They are not real heavy and I'm not going to be using real plants in these so I wasn't too worried about just using the hot glue. The plants I'm going to be using in them are these three succulents from Dollar Tree. At first I started placing the Spanish moss in the planters first but then realized it was better to put the succulent inside the planter and then place the Spanish moss all the way around the succulent afterward. So that's what I continued to do for all three of my pots. 
To add a little bit more detail to the bottom and the top of this piece, I'm using four strands of nautical rope. I'm using two of them on the top and two of them on the bottom. To attach them, I'm using hot glue just right on the wood and then placing the rope over top of it. Originally, I was gonna have the rope wrapped around the piece of wood, but then decided I was just gonna have them blunt cut on the like two sides of my board. I then did the same thing for my remaining two pieces of rope on the top of my board. And here is my piece all finished. I really love how this one turned out. It was super easy to do, hardly took me any time at all to create it. And this would be a perfect wall piece if you placed a hanger on the back of it. But for the sake of the video, I just have it placed on the table. Now moving into DIY number five. For this project, I'm using one of these unfinished wood recipe holders from Joanne Fabrics. This was $3.99, but anytime I buy something from Joanne's, I always use a coupon or buy it when it's on sale. I took out the jute hanger that was around the top and then I started staining this entire piece with my CraftSmart wood stain in the color brown and I used an old towel to apply the stain. I have not been able to find the CraftSmart stain at Michael's for some time now, so I don't think that they make it anymore, which is a bummer because it's my favorite. So if you guys know of a really good water-based stain, I would love to know what it is. So you can leave me a comment in the comments down below letting me know what your favorites are. Once this entire piece was all stained and dry, I then used some sandpaper to distress around all of the edges of the piece and then a little bit on the front of it as well. Next, I'm using this Farm Fresh stencil that came in a pack of stencils from Michaels. I believe it is the Folk Art brand and I will try to have it linked down in the description box below. I'm placing the stencil in the top center of my recipe holder and then I'm using some painter's tape around all four sides of this stencil so that I don't get any paint on my wood that I've already stained. For the paint, I'm using my Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Plaster and to apply it, I'm using my Dollar Tree stencil brush. Once the paint has dried, I'm then removing all of the painter's tape and the stencil. I'm also going to be using this little chicken that came on this piece that I picked up from Walmart. I believe it was back in the fall. I basically just bought this piece because I wanted to have the little farmhouse animals. So it had a hole in it and I needed to fill the hole so I used some of my wood filler to fill that in and then once it was all dry I used my sandpaper to sand it down smooth. I then painted it with my Waverly paint in the color plaster with a one quick coat and then once that was dry I took a piece of cotton cord, this is from Hobby Lobby, and I strung it through the hole that was already pre-drilled into this piece, and then I just made a knot and cut the ends of that off. And then for the very last step, I used some hot glue on the backside of my chicken and glued that underneath the words Farm Fresh. Here is the mini recipe holder all finished. It was a super simple project and it's a perfect for any farmhouse kitchen. And because of the size, this one is also perfect for a tiered tray. And now for DIY number six, I'm using this framed thankful sign that I picked up from Dollar Tree. And I first started by removing the piece of cardboard with the thankful word on it from the frame. And then I started painting my frame with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and I did one coat of this paint. I then set that aside to dry and I'm using four of these little mini unfinished wood flower pots. These did come from Hobby Lobby and they did come in a pack all together. And I did paint those with that same Waverly paint in the color plaster. For the cardboard backing that was originally in the frame, I glued some of this striped cardstock onto the cardboard and then ended up not really liking it. So instead I'm using some of this striped fabric that's also from Hobby Lobby and I just laid out my cardboard on top of my fabric and then cut out around it for the size that I need. I did leave a lot of extra fabric fabric around all four sides so that I'm able to fold the fabric over along the back side of the cardboard. Then to attach my fabric to my cardboard, I'm placing hot glue right on the cardboard and then folding that fabric over top onto the glue. And I continue that step for all four sides. 
Now that I have all of my fabric attached to my cardboard piece, I can then place that back into my frame and secure it. Then it's time to attach all four of my painted flower pots. But first, I just space them out onto the front of my fabric exactly where I want them to be so I know where to glue them. And then I'm using hot glue on the back side of each one of my flower pots and then I'm just placing those back into their place. Next, I'm adding some Spanish moss to all four of my flower pots. I'm placing hot glue right inside of the pot and then pressing the moss over top of that. And I did trim down the moss a little bit with some scissors so that it didn't look so messy. Then I'm using some of these cute little white flowers from Hobby Lobby. I cut them off of their stems and I'm using one flower per pot. And to attach them inside of the pots, I'm using a little bit of hot glue on the stem and then just pressing them down into the Spanish moss. For this next step, you'll see I did have to take the cardboard backing part back out of its frame. Next, I'm taking a piece of jute and I'm wrapping it around the top of my flower pot right underneath the lip that's on the pot. And I'm taking the jute and wrapping it around to the back side of the flower pot and hot gluing that down. Once the glue has set, I'm then taking the pieces of jute and I'm twisting them together. And then once I have them all twisted, I'm taking the jute and wrapping it around the top of the cardboard piece and hot gluing that down to secure it. If I would have done this step before I glued my pots down, it would have made it a lot easier, but I did not know that I was gonna be doing this in the beginning of the project. I was just kind of going with the flow when I started, so it would be easier to do this step before gluing your pots onto the fabric. So if you're gonna do this, just remember to do that first. I did continue to do that for all four of my flower pots. Once I had them all attached with the jute, I then placed my backing back into the frame. And here are my framed flower pots all finished. This project turned out a lot different than what I had originally planned, but I really love how everything turned out. And this is a perfect for any tabletop decor for spring or summer. For DIY number seven, this project is super easy. I'm using one of these glass jars that I picked up from Dollar Tree, and I'm first starting out by removing the lid from the jar, and then I'm painting that lid with my Folk Art chalk paint in the color Rich Black. I only did one coat of this paint on the entire jar lid. For this project, I'm also using some of this black sand from Dollar Tree, and I'm pouring about an inch or so of sand on the very bottom of the jar. Then I'm using some rocks from Dollar Tree. I'm using these natural rocks, and I'm placing those in the bottom of the jar. And I'm also gonna be using some of the white stones that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. I thought it would be really pretty to just add a little bit of this white color along with those natural stones. So once I have those all placed in the bottom, I'm using one of these really cute succulents also from Dollar Tree. I'm placing a hot glue on the very bottom stem of the succulent and then I'm pressing that down into the sand between the rocks. And then putting together my painted jar lid and then screwing that back onto my jar. And then taking a piece of jute and I'm wrapping it around the top of my jar twice before tying it in a knot and then cutting off the extra long ends. And here is my planted succulent jar. This project is by far the easiest in today's video. And I just love the simplicity of it and it just looks so pretty here on my tiered tray. Now moving right along into DIY number eight. For this one, I'm using four of these unfinished wooden palettes from Dollar Tree. And I started by painting all four of them with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And I did make sure to paint in between all of the wooden slats on all of the palettes because you will be able to see them. And I did a one coat of paint on them. Once the paint was all dry, I started attaching them together and I'm gonna have them all going upward so the long sides are gonna face up and I'm using hot glue just right on the sides and then pressing them all together to form a little box.
Next, I need to create a bottom for my box. So I'm using eight popsicle sticks from Dollar Tree. Six of the popsicle sticks are gonna be the bottom of my box, and then two of them are gonna hold all of the other ones together. So I'm just taking the two that I'm gonna be attaching all of them together with, and I'm cutting those down a little bit so that they can fit. And then I'm using hot glue on the popsicle sticks, and then just pressing them down onto the six bottom ones to hold them all together. And then placing my box on top of the popsicle sticks just to get an idea of where I need to cut them off a little bit because they are a little bit too long. So to cut them down, I'm just using my scissors and you do wanna use a good sharp pair or if you have some cutters that cut through wood, those would work probably better than scissors. So I just continued that for each side until it was completely the size that I needed for my bottom. Now it's time to attach that bottom that I just created onto my box. So I'm putting the hot glue around the sides of the box and then just pressing that bottom square that I created on the bottom. And then to make it match the rest of my piece, I'm just painting that with that same Waverly paint and the color plaster so that it all matches. To add some detail around my box, I'm using some of this dark burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. I'm wrapping it around the very center of my box, just cutting that down to size, and then I'm hot gluing it around my box. Then over top of that burlap ribbon, I'm attaching some of this black and white buffalo check ribbon that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. It is the perfect size to go right around that burlap ribbon. So I didn't have to cut down the sides at all. I just cut it down to size and then hot glued it over top of the burlap. To add one extra detail to the very front of my box, I'm cutting down four pieces of this jute and I'm creating a really simple bow. Once I have my bow created, I then hot glue it on the very front of my box over top of the buffalo check ribbon, which you won't see that clip because my camera stopped recording. And then for the very last step, I'm adding some of these eucalyptus stems that I picked up from Walmart. Here is my flower box all finished. This one definitely screams a farmhouse to me. It was super easy to create. And what I really love about this one is you can switch up the flowers for whatever season it is. Now moving right along into DIY number nine. For this one, I'm using two of these really pretty placemats that I just recently picked up from Dollar General. They have that nice striped farmhouse print that's very popular right now. I first started out by cutting the tags off of the back side of both of the placemats so that you won't be able to see those. And then I place one of the placemats with the print side down. And then I started placing hot glue along one of the sides and then attaching the second placemat print side up. So I'm just basically hot gluing all of the sides together to create my throw pillow. You can sew if you wanted to. I am a terrible sewer, so I will not be sewing these together. Or you can even use a, like heat tape that's really great for fabric as well. So I did three of the sides together with the hot glue and I did leave one of the sides open so that I can fill it. To fill the inside of my pillow, I'm using this original polyfill. I usually always have this on hand since I am a crafter. I'm just placing it inside of the pillow until I think it's stuffed just the right amount. And then I'm hot gluing that last side together. And this is what the throw pillow looks like all finished. The placemats were $2 a piece and I already had the polyfill at home, so it only cost me $4 to create this really pretty farmhouse pillow. And now for the last DIY today. For this one, I'm using three pieces of scrap wood and these ones are 25 by three and a half. And I started by painting them with the Waverly paint in the color plaster. I did one coat of paint for all three pieces of wood. Once that paint was all dry, I then used my folk art chalk paint in the color Java on a chip brush and I just very lightly painted that over all of the pieces of wood that I've painted. This is giving them kind of that like rustic distressed farmhouse look that you guys know I love so much and I'm always really big on distressing. If you guys have seen any of my videos, then you will know that. Next, I'm attaching all of my wood pieces together. I'm placing hot glue on the sides of the wood and then pressing them together. You could always use an E6000 glue if you wanted something a little bit stronger than the hot glue. 
Then to ensure that all of my wood stays together, I'm adding just a little bit of extra hold by adding these painter sticks on the back side, and I'm just hot gluing those on in a diagonal. Next, I'm using this a Farm Fresh Flower Market Stencil from Hobby Lobby. I've used this in the past. Obviously, it has paint all over it, but I've reused it now like three times and it's still going strong. I'm just placing that on the top center of my wood piece and then I'm using some painter's tape to just make sure it's secure before I start painting. The paint color I'm using to stencil is the Folk Art Chalk Paint in the color Rich Black and I'm using my Dollar Tree stencil brush to apply the paint. Then once my paint has completely dried, I'm removing all of the painter's tape and my stencil. I'm also using this piece that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. This is the Woodpile brand and it was $4.49. And I'm just staining this piece with that CraftSmart wood stain that I love so much and can no longer find. So remember, let me know in the comments down below if you guys know of a better um, water-based stain that would be kind of similar to this one. But I'm just using an old towel to apply this and I'm only doing like the back part of this and then around all of the top edges because I'm going to be adding some other things to the front of this in a little bit and I didn't need to stain that part. Now I'm adding some of these wood pieces to the very front of my piece. I did pick these up at Hobby Lobby and they were like part of the Christmas and holiday stuff that they had out this past year and I got them on clearance after Christmas. I'm just measuring how long they need to be to go on the front of my piece and then I did end up cutting them in half just so that I could glue them on to the front a little bit better and I just hot glued them on, placed the hot glue right on the backing and stuck it to the front. Then I thought it would be really cute to add some Spanish moss on the front of this piece, so I'm using some hot glue to attach the moss in between all of the logs. I'm then using some hot glue on the back side of this piece to attach it to my wood piece underneath the words that I just stenciled on. It does have a spot where you could use a nail if you wanted to do that as well. Then I added some of these really pretty yellow flowers from Hobby Lobby. I cut them down a little bit and then placed the stems inside of my planter. And I also used some of these other really greenery pieces that are also from Hobby Lobby. I cut the stems down on those and then just added them in between my yellow flowers. And then I'm adding one more little detail to this piece. I did leave a little space between the logs and the top of my wood piece so that I could add this rope. This white rope is from Dollar Tree. I cut it down to fit on top of my piece and then I just hot glued it on. And then I also have a little bit of a gap on the bottom of the logs as well and I did the same thing. Just cut the white rope down to size and then hot glued that underneath the logs. And this is my wood piece all finished. I love how this one turned out. You could use a wall hanger on the back of it if you wanted to hang it on the wall or just set it on a table like I do here. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. And don't forget to go check out Heidi's video as well, and I will have her video and channel linked down in my description box. Thank you guys so much for watching.